Hey guys, it's Jonathan here from Rivers and Robots and Set Sail. Now, last week you guys sent in a bunch of questions on the topic of songwriting, and I tried to answer as many of those as I could. Anyway, the video ended up being really, really long, so I've chopped it into two parts. If you haven't watched part one yet, you can watch that up here. And if you have watched part one, then here's the rest of that video. Three, two, Anne on Instagram asked about the structure of a song. Um, I actually don't get too caught up on structure. I, I just try to write what feels right and what feels good. If you listen to songs like Shepherd of My Soul, they don't really follow a verse, chorus, bridge pattern. It's just like part one, part two, part three, part four. <laughs> it's just gonna feel right. I mean, you've also got songs like Home, um, which are basically just a few verses and then an instrumental section. While the structure is a good thing to have in place, it's not essential, and uh, you kind of just have to feel it. I know that's such a vague wishy-washy answer, but that literally is my answer. I I just write what feels good and what feels right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Rafs underscore Samp on Instagram asked, how do you get inspired? Um, reading the Bible, spending time with Jesus, praying, uh, going for walks, being out in nature, I find really inspiring. Uh, also sitting in like coffee shops with my headphones in, watching people walk past in the city. Sometimes I do this weird thing, but it's kind of fun, where I listen to an artist that I've never heard before, and a song I've never heard before, and I just listen to the intro of the song, right? Just like the chords and the progression and the rhythm, and then I pause it before any vocals come in, and I imagine if this was the intro to my song, what melody would I write there, and what, what direction would I take that song in? And um, I've actually come up with several song ideas that way. I've, I've written this melody for where I would imagine that song going, um, and then often I listen to the actual song and it's nothing like where I would have taken it and uh, But sometimes I really like my idea and I'll save it and I'll take that back and usually change the chords and the rhythm So it doesn't even sound like the original song by the end, but sometimes that's just a fun way to spark off New musical ideas uh, Diego on Instagram asked when you have a lot of random lyrics Do you focus on one or do you work simultaneously on all your ideas and do you put goals when you make songs like to make a song in a day? Um Generally, I work on songs simultaneously. Uh, sometimes I write a song all in one go and it just flows and they're often really great songs when they just kind of happen in a moment. And sometimes I have choruses sat on my laptop that have been there for ages and I come back a few times and I get no ideas and then months down the line I'll come back and listen to it again and suddenly I get an idea for the verse or the bridge. Um, also, the fretboard asked a question about co-writing earlier on, like when do you co-write and when do you finish one on your own? Sometimes that's a really good point to start co-writing with somebody. When you have like an unfinished idea or you've got a verse and a chorus and you don't know where to take it next, um, yeah, collaborate, work together with those kind of people because sometimes someone else might have the key to unlock the rest of that song that you don't have yourself. Uh, John Catalano, hey John, um, asked how do you diversify your writing? so that not everything you write sounds the same, both melodically and lyrically. Uh, push yourself. Like, write in a different style that you're used to, just for the fun of it. It's part of the reason I'm doing this Seasons project right now, is to push myself to write in different styles for each EP that I do throughout this year. And um, it's a lot of fun, it'll stretch yourself. You might not even use some of these songs that you, like, challenging yourself to write, but it's really fun to get out of that comfort zone of like, I write these kind of songs and this is what I do. Um, and just try something completely different and see how it goes. Um, bring in diversity in your lyrics, I would say read a lot of books, uh, go to different passages of the Bible that you may not normally go to, and that's one of the things I'm really passionate about in worship songwriting, is trying to explore some of those lesser sung about areas of who Jesus is. Um, I guess recent examples, uh, the song High Priest that we did on the Eternal Son, I really wanted to write a song about the humility of Jesus because I didn't know many songs about uh, Jesus being a servant and Jesus being all powerful and being God but also um, becoming a man and becoming flesh and blood and the humility that's involved in that where he, you know, he actually got tired, he actually got thirsty and these are things we don't really sing about very often but they're a truth of who Jesus is and help paint a fuller picture of just how beautiful and amazing he is. So, uh, Joanna on Instagram asks, do you get inspiration from anything to write songs or does it flow naturally from your mind? Do you believe your lyrics come from God as you write? Um, I guess in our case, the lyrics often come from the Bible, which is the word of God. So I guess in, in some ways the lyrics do come from God. Um, but honestly, I think there's a partnership in creating anything. Um, I think God gives us a gift to begin with and we can write and create things, but he also really loves to be involved in that process and to inspire melodies and words like 100%. I think creating something like that is a partnership between your own creativity and the inspiration of God. And hey, even the things that we do ourselves, like we were created by God anyway and created in his image. And we can only do the things that we do because he gave us those gifts. So 
none of it would be possible without God. Let's put it that way. Uh, Heather on Instagram asked about originality versus copying a style and making it your own. Uh, a lot of American Christian contemporary music sounds the same. Uh, need advice. I actually think there's a really good reason that a lot of Christian music sounds the same. And there's a pastoral element to writing a congregational song in that you want to bring a whole room of people together from all different backgrounds and styles and musical tastes and if you go to a gig like everyone's there because they like the band or they like that kind of music but in church you've got a load of people together who probably all like different styles all like different things and you've got to find that middle ground of songs that appeal to kind of a really broad spectrum and so i think that's the reason that there are a lot of songs that sound the same is that you have this kind of middle ground of a musical style that generally encompasses something that pretty much everyone can get on board with and as frustrating as that might be for music geeks like us who might be really into really quirky, different kind of music. Um, that stuff is out there, you can find it, you can listen to it, but it may not work quite as well in the congregational setting for bringing a whole vast room of really diverse people together. Um, I actually think there's a real talent to writing the kind of song that is congregational and that's really easy to sing and really easy to enter into. I think it would be really amazing if every songwriter found their sound and their style and were just honest and authentic with who they are wrote the kind of songs that they want to write. And some of those songs may not have as wide a reach or appeal as others. Um, we actually, as a band, were just in a little discussion group with uh, the guys from House Fires and they were talking about songwriting. And they said this really simple thing, but it was powerful. And that was, the world needs your songs. Like, songwriters, if you're out there, people need to hear your songs. Like, even if your songs aren't the massive congregational hits that everyone can join into, there are people out there that probably love what you write and love your sound. And it might be a small audience, it might be a big audience, but there are people out there who need your songs. Logan John H on Instagram asked about melody lines. Uh, lyrics are a little easier, but how do you come up with unique melodies? Any tips? You kind of just have to try things out, like try going up where you would normally go down. Try out melodies in a different place. So like, let's just play some chords in the key of G. Like I could do a melody in this range. Or I could go like a higher range. Or I could go like a lower range And there you've got three different kinds of melodies just because they're in different registers um, Also try things like keeping notes really close together like, try big variations in your melody, like doing whole octave jumps like You know, you, you can do so many different things with a melody. Um, you can have fun with it, you can go all kinds of places with melodies. I love writing melodies, it's just one of my favourite things and I think it's one of the things I'm most drawn to in songs. Like, the songs that I really really love are the songs that just have the great Melodies. Um, the Living Gospel asked, how do you write your own song? What do you do when you can't play an instrument? Um, it is harder to write a song when you don't play an instrument, but it's not impossible. You can just sing, and sometimes you'll actually come up with really creative, inventive melodies when you just sing a melody unaccompanied. And then get together with a producer or someone that plays an instrument and try and get them to write the musical side to the melody that you've written. Like, it's not impossible, but it definitely helps to play an instrument. So if you can learn an instrument, I would recommend it. Emily on Instagram asked, what atmosphere do you enjoy writing in, outdoors, at home, on a train? Uh, in the car, mostly. I get a lot of ideas just driving around and then record them as voice memos. He's a Wembe on Twitter asked, is there ever an unfinished, untitled work that you haven't felt inspired by God to finish? And how long does flushing it out take? Um, yeah, there's loads. I've got a hard drive full of unfinished songs, or songs that were even finished but just didn't fit on an album and uh, I never figured out what to do with them. <laughs> um, I don't feel a pressure to finish every song that I write. Um, I'd much rather start a load of songs and finish half of them um, than just like sit with a few and, and stress myself out because I can't finish them off. Um, so generally when I'm working on an album, for example, I write way more than we actually need for the album. Um, I'll just write like 20 or more songs and some of them will be finished, some of them won't be finished. Um, but then out of that you get to kind of narrow down to the ones that you feel are going to make a good collection of songs together. Um, fleshing it out can take a long time uh, if you have those unfinished songs, but don't rush it. Uh, occasionally you just come back to old ideas and something clicks and you're like, 
I know where to take this song now. And also, like I mentioned before, it's always good to get other people's input, um, and maybe again, there's an opportunity to co-write there if you reach a dead end and you don't know where to take a song next. Ben on Twitter asked, how do you develop a catchy riff into a full-fledged song? I get stuck at around the two minutes of material and don't know how to flesh it out nicely. Again, co-write, uh, sometimes uh, someone else might have those extra two minutes and those extra pieces of the puzzle to make that song feel complete. Um, one idea I would try is just try taking the chords somewhere different for the next section. Um, perhaps I've got a loop that's working really well and I've got some ideas for that section of the song, but I don't know where to go next, so I'll, I'll just go back to the actual chord progression or the rhythm and just completely switch it up. Maybe I'll drop out the drums for that part or go to like a minor chord, um, some kind of unexpected place that just makes it really interesting and sometimes that can be like a route to a more interesting section of the song and that can be a lot of fun. And the last question is from Leslie on Twitter uh, who said, I always like hearing about your process and the story behind songs, whether lyrics or how the music came together. So I have shared a little bit of that already, but this is something I'd like to do some more of, like taking a specific Rivers and Robots song or a solo song and talking about the story behind it, um, the message in the song, why I wrote the song. Um, and yeah, it's something I'd really love to do. Maybe do whole videos just on song stories. So um, if that's something you guys are interested in, uh, maybe let us know in the comments if there are any specific songs that you want to hear the story behind those songs. So guys, thank you for your questions. I hope those answers were helpful. Um, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, maybe give it a like or even share it with your friends so that they can watch some of these videos too. And we will see you next time with another video. Thank you for watching. Set sail, video blog. Set sail, video blog. It's a video, it's a blog as well. Set sail.